welcome. I am Halcyon. This is Hug Nation. Happy New Year! The New Year's is a time when many people get very excited and they get very motivated and they put together goals and resolutions and get fired up. And rooted in that is some kind of disappointment to what we once were and this eagerness to what we can be. And it's exciting to whip ourselves up into a frenzy. But I want to caution people that that belief that happiness and worth is connected to productivity and to achievement is a trap and it can cause you a long-term relationship with stress and disappointment. And yet in our world, it is exceptionally difficult to let go of that need to do, 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 grow, 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 build, 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 improve, improve, improve. I'm not saying any of those things are bad. I'm saying that the cultural pressure that we internalize puts us in a state of constant dissatisfaction, constant stress. And so the activities that might be pleasurable or joyful end up being a burden. And we live in the state of psyched out, tense stress. So how do you snap yourself out of that mindset? How do you get out of that stress? How do you get out of that feeling that I need to be doing more? Or that just disappointment with whatever you're doing. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. One of the tricks that I like to use to get into a more healthy mental perspective is that of a cosmic perspective. I love looking out over the ocean. It's one of my favorite things to recenter. And there's a number of reasons. One, the ocean is so large in its physical size and its weight. There is its own gravity to something so huge. But when looking out over something so large, I let my mind kind of blur and soften and try to imagine the millions and millions and millions and millions of living things that are in the middle of their drama, that are chasing after their dinner, that are running away from a predator, that are trying to fertilize an egg, that are trying to survive and thrive in this massive sea. And it lets me relax a little bit that narrative I have about how important everything I'm doing is. That feeling like, oh, I have to get this on the boss's desk or else hell will go to a handbasket. The truth is, there will be no vehicle going to hell, whether handbasket or otherwise. And that recognition of our smallness is so critical and so helpful in balancing out that unhealthy anxiety. Even better than looking out over the sea is pondering space. Because it doesn't take very long before you get a true haunting sense of the smallness of our body on this planet, in this solar system, around this star, amongst the billions of stars. And some people feel like that can be a very depressing thing to feel like, well, I'm so small, I can't make a difference. Right! The belief that you are supposed to make a difference is what is causing you the inability to enjoy the miracle in every moment. If you can find a way to surrender, to allow, then your responsibility is not to change the universe, but instead to find alignment with the patterns that already exist. When you start to see the magnitude of the patterns and the cycles of the cosmos, you go, ah, clearly, obviously, that is way beyond my influence. We get tripped up in the ability. We know we can affect our body and we can affect our immediate surroundings. And so we falsely project that to think that we are in control. We need to steer. We need to fix. But if we can surrender, trust to this massiveness, then we can have whimsy and awe at this 
little bitty piece of the whole that we have a perspective of that we have an awareness of. <laughs> it's easy to get into that headspace of like, I'm important, what I do matters. But then you're always tense and always fighting, 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 fighting. You can take a bulldozer down to the shore and push back the sand. But I do not recommend fighting the tide. Instead, soften and quiet so that the patterns and the cycles and the flow and the current becomes apparent and then work with it. Then use your efforts to go with the flow to float more and steer less. In addition to looking at the vastness of space as a way to get into that cosmic perspective, you can also look at the vastness of time. I recently was looking at this webpage on waitbutwhy.com and it had this cool illustration. It, it was a tool, a visual tool, to demonstrate what a percentage of, say, a human lifetime was into the scale of how long cities have been around compared to how long humans have been around, how long mammals have been around. And it just, the numbers are staggering. The percentage of time that humans have been sentient is like 0.1 million years, 0.1 million years. That's how long humans have been, you know, aware and creatively expressing cave paintings and such. There was actually like 150 thousand years where humans were wandering around as animals, but that's a whole nother story. But when you compare that, say humans have been around for 0.1 million years and dinosaurs were around for 165 million years, my life is even a blip within the expanse of all of human life. So my choice, my decision, my stress, my panic in this moment is statistically invisible. The only reason to put care and stress on it is by choice. And so that is what I suggest we practice doing. Use the cosmic perspective to snap you out of the feeling like everything is important and everything matters and I am... Ah! To pull out and go, oh, I can choose what I care about and then play life like you would play a soccer game. As you suit up in your jersey and you're with your team, you have camaraderie, you have an agreed upon goal, you have a scoring system that you're working towards, you want to play by the rules, you want to have good sportsmanship, you want to push yourself and sweat and have fun and be challenged and maybe have a struggle and maybe have a oh, 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 and have that roller coaster of an experience, yeah, 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 and the triumph. But if you get to a point where you are so upset about how the game is going, you're, the, the, you get a goal and you just, you're just crushed, you should be able to snap back and go, whoa, 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 I'm just playing a game. I chose this game. I'm having fun. So what if I lose this round? So what if we lose this goal? That's not the objective. The objective is to enjoy the game. And the cosmic perspective, the release of importance in a grand cosmic scale, allows you to put whatever importance you want on whatever game you're playing. It allows you to go as deep and intense as you want and allows you to release as much as you want. Neil deGrasse Tyson said, when I look up in the universe, I know I'm small, but I'm also big. He says, I'm big because I'm connected to the universe and the universe is connected to me. And I think that's a big part of a spiritual path is becoming aware that you are the universe, you are connected to the universe, the universe is connected to you, and then forgetting that, remembering that, feeling the oneness, feeling your divinity, feeling connected to all things, and then forgetting that. Because in that state of oneness, you do slip away from some of the human experience. What's the point of anything? Everything is perfect. All is one. Um, it's beautiful and a tad dull. It is within the forgetting, it is within the drama, it is within that game that we were able to experience relationship, joy, excitement, triumph, as well as pain and suffering and loss. 
But that is the human experience. As insignificant as one life may be in the massive cosmic drama, as insignificant as one ant might be on a plane, as insignificant as one cell might be in our body, it's all connected, it's all related. And to that cell, it's critical. To that ant, it's critical. To us, it's everything. And we have the choice to engage to the degree that we find that game exhilarating and triumphant and joyous and purposeful. So when we can release and relax and let go of the, the need to change the universe, change the world, because that's not our possibility. In the grand scheme, there is nothing we could do to actually make a real difference. I mean, let's say you got a hand on a nuclear warhead. You could make a, maybe a tiny impact on the planet right now, but in the scheme of the cosmos, you're still not making that big a difference. Maybe you work your tiny off for environmentalism and you save some species. Still, when the Earth explodes into flames because it's the sun extinguishes, what's the point? Who really cares? So, if you can release from the obligation to change the world, you can relax and enjoy it. You can appreciate. You can have bliss and joy and love. And I would say that we can model ourselves on a bulb plant as to what our objective could be. A bulb, as you plant a bulb and it grows, if it gets sun and it gets water and and everything it needs, it blooms and it pulls a bunch of energy, photosynthesizes, and then it pulls all that energy back into the bulb. And the next year, it blooms more blooms and more foliage. And it keeps doing that as long as it's healthy and growing. If it doesn't get the things it needs, it may not bloom the next year or bloom less or have a smaller flower. There's no punishment to the bloom. That's just its purpose in the universe is this state of positive, healthy growth. And that's our purpose in the universe, is positive, healthy growth. Not changing the world, positive, healthy growth of ourselves, of working through our hang-ups, of releasing our fears, of building relationships, of spreading love, of demonstrating kindness. That is how we do our job, our role, as part of this massive symphony of the cosmos. It's totally meaningless and critically important. So I think the exercise of exploring the cosmic perspective in space and in time allows you to really surrender to your weaknesses, to recognize the limited impact that you have on the universe. And from that place of surrender, you are allowed, you are given permission to trust. Whether that be to some divine power or to simply the wisdom of the universe's natural cycles, but whatever your conscious little mind can do, you gotta just let go and go, there's no way. Even with, if I knew everything that every human ever learned, I still would not have enough awareness to know what's best, what's supposed to happen, what is the direction. I cannot steer. I can only have integrity and align with love and act from a place of my truth, not the truth of some ego, intelligent concept or idea or plan, but from my truth of my knowledge of I am a part of the universe. I am connected to the one. My role is to be in alignment, in harmony, express kindness, be of love. Whoosh. Thank you, Grand Cosmos, for all your lessons. Thank you, mind-blowing time, for the reminder of how small and brief we are. Thank you for this moment, this precious moment that we can share right now. Thank you for all you are in the world and all that you are not. I love you.